Hi everybody, and welcome back to BIM Hive. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at exporting all of our project families to our project directory subfolders themselves, and which will allow us to ensure consistent um, quality control as well as modeling standards for the project. Now, you're probably wondering yourself, what is the point behind this? Well, a lot of every office has a template file set up with all the families that are going to be default, whether they be chairs, furniture, actual casework, or even trees for that matter. But the problem is, is that every project is different. So we'll go in and we'll change the parameters inside of these, whether it's increase the height, the width, the actual finishes, or its actual cost value itself. Now, a problem is, is that I've come across in my office is that we don't actually go and save these families to a directory folder for our project. We go and we overwrite our templates. And this is bad because the template design is meant to be versatile, it's meant to be perfect, it's meant to be usable by any person with any skill level inside of your office or even the end user with the client. But if we're overriding these and we're overriding the actual parameters inside of it and something's project specific to be 2400 long, while in actuality it's a one-off product that the manufacturers put out for us, but the stock standard maximum width of it happens to be 2200 long, we're going to run into a problem now, aren't we? Especially if we're going to start using this across all of our projects and we don't realize it until the very end. And then we start seeing a lot of gaps inside the building itself. So, this one is a very relatively simple node to do and also to execute. It's only a few steps required inside of it. The only pain problem behind it is that this comes from the Orchid package itself. Now, the Orchid package, it takes two seconds to set up and it works every single time. Just make sure to go to the GitHub page and just read the actual readme file. Don't try and be a cowboy with it. Just press the execution button inside the builds and you'll be good to go. So, what we're just gonna do over here is open up today's node, which is export all project families to subcategory folders. And we're gonna start working through it. So what we start off here on our left hand side is element types. So we're actually getting all of the family types inside of the project itself. And then we're getting all elements of these types as well. This will take into account the actual subtypes of the families themselves. Now, we're going to go over to the code block here. We're going to grab the name of all of these family types, and then we're going to turn that into a string. Now, remember, if it's not a string and it's an element itself, you're going to run into a bit of a problem there because you can't actually write anything else. And then we go over to here, and we have a few nodes that connect up into this bad boy right here. So our first one here is going to be using the directory path. Now this is a pretty good one, it just pops up, it's like old school Windows 95, we're finding a folder to set, um, save to, but you can manu maneuver it pretty easy. So what I'm just going to do here is just go to my computer, go to my desktop, go to this current uh, BIM Hive file, go to our Revit file, and then select families. I'm sure that every single office has their own um, directory path to it, so it shouldn't be that hard to figure it out. Down here, we have the family by name. So this is coming all the way across from the actual element types of the family itself. So this will get all the other sub types inside of it, and we can just open it up and it should be good. Then we have over here a few of some good ones. So this one gives us the option to make it into a subfolder. Now this is great. This is what I like to see. So rather than us having 800 individual families all inside of the normal folder structure itself with just an ascending or descending order, this one will go and put it through all the categories that Revit has. Now tell me that's not a time saver right there. And then we also have this override option. Typically I keep this on false because I only have to run it just a few times at a time. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh but what if we have to redo the chair? because we made a change to it. The thing is, if you have your project set up correctly after doing this the first time, where all of your files and your families come from this folder itself, you won't have to override it, because every time you go to load it back into your project, it says, do you want to save this? You just press yes, and then we'll just do it right there. And so this way, you're only bringing the new families and you're not wasting time or killing your computer. So all we need to do now is just click run, and please note at the same time, this will take about five to ten minutes depending on the size of your project but it will save you an immense amount of time throughout the actual project length itself awesome so you've just gone away you made a cup of tea or made a cup of coffee and you come back to your desk and then you start seeing this on the right hand side of our watch node now here's something I want to make clear to a lot of Dynamo users whenever you see the yellow um, error message come up 
always look at the watch note itself. Don't look at the actual pop-up message in the yellow color. Nine times out of ten, you think there's an error and it's gone wrong. But in actuality, it's worked out perfectly for us. And if you just hover over the top of it, you'll notice that the parameter name says for it it's a loadable family and it's not editable. That's just what it is. We can go in later on and we can filter these ones out and we get the element ID and then we can save them off manually if we want to. Now these are probably just going to be the model in place elements that I was telling you about before the other day. So we've actually, all the files are now saved. What we just need to do is just open up our directory and voila, in the exact same location as I had before, BIMHive Revit file families. As you can see here, all the categories inside of the project itself are here. We just open up doors, we've got doors. If we open up casework, we've got casework families. If we open up room tags, we have a room tag. Now tell me this isn't a time saver and tell me this isn't going to make your life a lot easier as well as being a BIM manager or the actual model offerer of your office. Save yourself so many hours by just running this one node. I hope you've had a great lesson today. I hope to hear from you soon.